Hi everyone, Ian from Bristol Ground School here. Now there's a fairly tricky aeroplane performance question out there and I'd like to run through that with you in this video today. Uh, it's appeared in a few exams now and it's also in our question bank, BGS Online. And there are one or two variations on the question. Uh, there's a bit of maths involved, but like many similar questions, once you understand what's going on, you'll have a good chance of dealing with this and any variations of the question you might encounter. So let's take a look. Given the following information, what is the minimum vertical clearance of the obstacle by the Performance Class B aeroplane? And we have some information here. Cloud base is 300 feet above reference zero. Now, reference zero means ground level. No wind, which is convenient, uh, which means that the TAS of 101 knots is also the ground speed. Obstacle at 15,000 feet from the end of the takeoff distance required. Now, uh, 15,000 feet is important to remember because normally we, we calculate our distances in nautical miles. Uh, so at some point we're going to have to convert to feet. Uh, and the height of 600 feet above reference zero. All engines rate of climb is uh, 1,830 feet a minute and the single engine rate of climb 400 feet a minute. Take of power can be used throughout the whole climb segment. So if we look at our answer options here, 40 feet, 215 feet, 815 feet, 235 feet. You can see that two of these options are widely different from the uh, the other two. So my guess is the answer is going to be either B or D. But let's find out. Okay, there are a couple of things to note, first of all. It's a performance class B aeroplane, which means there are gross to net factors involved in the two engine climb rate or the distance that we cover flying on two engines. Also, takeoff screen height is 50 feet, and we'll need to bear this in mind when calculating the climb distance to cloud. The other thing to be aware of is that for the purpose of exams, we consider the engine failure to occur at the point we enter cloud. This is because if we're visual in a light twin when we have an engine failure, then we'd be expected to stop the climb and circle back to the departure point perhaps, or even pick a field straight ahead. Many light twins don't climb too well on one engine. And to be fair, some twins don't fly very well on one engine either. Okay, let's start by drawing this out, see what we know and see what we need to find out so we can answer the question. Here's a gloomy day with our 300 foot cloud base. Our obstacle is 600 feet above the ground and 15,000 feet from the takeoff distance required, which is our 50 foot screen height. The flight path we're going to calculate begins at the 50 foot screen height and climbs swiftly to the cloud where an engine pops and then we struggle on upwards at the engine out climb rate to avoid said mast. We need to know by how much we will clear the mast, which means we need to find out how far we will be climbing on two engines and how far, how long, we will be climbing on one engine. There's only one formula we need to know, and this is it, the travel triangle. Distance is speed times time, time is distance over speed, and speed is distance over time. That's it. All the maths comes from this relationship. So let's uh, take a look at our first bit of maths. So. We need to find out how far the aeroplane is going to fly whilst climbing on two engines. So distance is time multiplied by speed. Now we don't know any times at the moment. We're going to have to work that out first. So time is distance over speed. We know the distance of this cloud is 300 feet, but we're beginning at the 50 foot screen height, so that's 250 feet to the cloud. And we know the speed at which we're closing in on that cloud, 1,830 feet per minute right of climb. So that's our calculation. Distance is in feet and the climb rate is in feet per minute. So no conversions needed. And the answer is 0 0.14 minutes. Now we have a time. So ground distance is the time multiplied by the ground speed. Time is in minutes, so you can either convert this to hours by multiplying by 60 or convert your ground speed in nautical miles per hour to minutes by dividing by 60. I've chosen the latter, so we end up with 0 0.24 nautical miles. But that's not our answer. 
CAP 698 says we need to apply the gross to net factor of 1.3. and This gives us a ground distance of 0.3 nautical miles. Now, you might be thinking that what we've actually calculated here is the climb distance to the cloud along the flight path. And that's not the same as the horizontal distance that we fly across the ground. And you'd be right. But the climb gradients of civil transport aircraft are very shallow, typically five degrees. We're not flying F-16s here. So if you think of a triangle with an acute angle of five degrees, then the hypotenuse, which represents our climb path, is going to be very close in distance to the adjacent, which represents our horizontal distance. So this is pretty convenient because we use this fact in a number of climb and descent calculations in aircraft performance. So let's go back into our diagram and uh, see what we need to calculate next. Aha, so the distance, remember, to the obstacle is in feet, and we've calculated distance to cloud in nautical miles. So to convert nautical miles to feet, we multiply by 6,080. More precisely, it's 6,076, but 6080 is easier to remember, and the answers are based on this figure. So we'll multiply 0.3 nautical miles by 6080 to get 1,824 feet. Take that away from 15,000 feet, and this leaves us a further 13,176 feet to the obstacle once we enter the cloud. Now you can convert this back to nautical miles if you wish, or do it later. Uh, I've done it now, so um, 13,176 feet divided by 6080 is 2.16 nautical miles. In goes the information, and all we have to do now is work out how long we'll be climbing on that one engine climb rate of 400 feet per minute. So time we're looking for, time is distance over speed. We have a distance and we have a speed, happy days. We'll need this time in minutes, so we'll multiply by 60 now and we get 1.287 minutes. Height gained is distance, and distance is time multiplied by speed. Uh, speed in this case is the rate of climb, and this gives us 515 feet. We're nearly finished. All we have to do now is add up all the height gained since we departed from our 50 foot screen height. 250 feet to the cloud and then 550 feet after the engine failure. This gives us 815 um, feet uh, total and the obstacle is 600 feet so our clearance is 215 feet. So, answer B, 215 feet. So, to recap, we consider the engine fails at the point we enter the cloud, the distance on two engines needs to be factored for net, and keep an eye on what units you're using to convert from nautical miles to feet times by 6080. And finally, remember the travel triangle because all your mass is based around the distance time speed relationship. Now there are similar questions out there with different requirements, different bits of information that need to be calculated and in some cases you may well have to find the climb rates from a graph. But if you understand what we've done here then you should have little problem with the different variations you might encounter. So thanks for listening and um, bye for now.